Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> it looks like there's only uh, two of us, two, two uh, plus me. Oh, <laughs> well. That's good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but it's it's early yet. <laughs> yeah. One, one more. Hi. Hi there. OK. Um, well, let's uh, talk about a couple of general things. This is recorded, so you can work with it at your own pace after we're done. I'm going to show you two different ways to turn an image to black and white. And that's the priority. If we have time, then we'll try to do a couple of other things, but uh, we'll see how things go. Okay. All right. Uh, the first thing to know about Photoshop, I'm gonna share my screen, is that it is a vast program. And when I say vast, I mean vast, vast, vast. There are many different ways to do the same thing. So you can see my screen okay? Yes, uh-huh. All right, yes. I have a, an image here. We'll start with this one. This is a uh, waterfall in uh, uh, east of Seattle in Washington state. And I'm gonna make my screen a little bit bigger, but not the full size, there we go. All right, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do, uh, first I'll show you something interesting, by the way. Can you see in the lower left-hand corner, do you see where it says 200%? Yes. Yes. So I can take that number and I can type 180 and hit enter. Mm -hmm. And it made it smaller. I could also do control minus on a PC or uh command minus on a mac are you guys mac or pc i'm pc um oh. okay i am also pc all right that's good i'll talk only pc tonight then mm -hmm. so i'm gonna do control plus to make it bigger but guess what it's a little too big at 200 percent. i want to be able to see the entire board so 175 i'm gonna guess at whoops it made it 1750. And now I'm going to say enter. Okay. So now I can see everything that <clears throat> fills up the screen. And uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at uh, the easiest way to do this as a black and white. And you still have plenty of control, which is something I like about. Uh, this first method I'm gonna show you. So you come to image, adjustments, and guess what? It says black and white right there. So you hit black and white, and it has changed the image to a generalized black and white. <clears throat> now we, as we saw in there, it has a huge amount of greens in there. Mm -hmm. So I can just come to the green slider. So this looks at all the original colors that were in it, and it made a judgment how to turn it to black and white. But I but I may want to do something differently. So I'm going to slide that and just see what I get here. So I'm going to change my green slightly, mm -hmm. see what it's doing. They're much right. here. They're getting lighter. And they come very light, uh, or much lighter on the far side. Same thing with the yellow. See how much brighter the image is getting? Way too bright. It almost looks like it's snow. But I'm going to bring that back down uh, to something that I like. And this is all judged judgment on your of your own, what you what you like. And you do this for every color in the image. So you look at the reds. There's not that much red in there, but mm -hmm. in particular, look at this down tree right here. Right. If I move that red slider too far down, it just turns it black and it's not has no detail anymore. So I want to be somewhere right around there is where I would 
<clears throat> that too. Same thing with the cyans. And I don't see a lot of change in cyan because there's not much blue in the image. And there's not much blue either. A little bit in the water down the bottom. Uh, and, and then the magentas, there's going to be some magentas in the branches and a little bit in the water. Okay, so that gets me to a basic black and white. Now, I, it's customized because I moved all these different uh, channels for the different colors. And that's a quick way to start getting it into black and white. So I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to refine that by going to Image Adjust. And I'm just doing Brightness and, and uh, Contrast. And in Brightness and Contrast, I can see if I want to brighten it up. But my water, I'm losing detail in the water. So I don't want to do that. And then in Contrast, find a part uh, a number that's pleasing to my eye. And mm -hmm. that's a secondary adjustment to make after you've made the uh, change from the black and white adjustment tool. Now, can you see on your screens, can you see these little dots here? Um, in the biggest waterfall, there's some white specks. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. And, and that's because if you use a lot of changes, you're going to start to get this. Uh, now that I've enlarged it, you can see that it's mm -hmm. kind of blown out. Mm hmm and you can decide if you want to go back and look at your adjustments and change those, then you can do so. And I haven't saved anything yet, so you can always start over. Mm -hmm. Plus, I have my original image that's in color, and I could always come back to that as well. But a, a safe way to do it is that you can also take whatever you're working with. And so I'll just do that for now. Uh, you can take the background layer, double click on it mm -hmm. so that it's just a regular layer now, and then duplicate the layer. And then whatever adjustments you make are only on this layer, not on this one. And if I did that at, at the very beginning, then I wouldn't have any adjustments to this other than black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I would do to solve this is there's a blur tool here. Mm -hmm. And once again, I'm showing the simplest ways to approach this. And you can see that the blur tool, since the water is blurred already, it's not really going to affect the visual. So I can just take that blur tool and I can modify and get rid of all those dots. Mm -hmm. And I could do that everywhere in the image. I'm doing control minus to get change the size of it. And fix those where they occur. So black and white is a judgment thing. You have to decide uh if the image will go that way will the image look good in black and white and this one happens to work okay uh, so yeah. you, you can do one more level of refinement if you wanted to and that would be in camera raw and that's simply under filter and camera raw filter and I'm not going to go there right now because I could be done with this image right now, black and white, if I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. I might blur it a little more to get rid of all those fine specks. Uh, but that might be good enough for what my intentions were. 
And if that's the case, then that's a quick way to make a black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, um, is this, by doing it this way with the color sliders uh, for a competition where it's a monochrome um, entry, will this qualify as a monochrome or do because, you have to? Yes, because in monochrome, you can use any special adjustment tool you want. Mm -hmm. So it's not limited in any way. Uh, I could even Photoshop in extra rocks if I wanted to in monochrome. And it is now a monochrome image. Okay. And it's only grays or single tones. You know, it's blacks and grays and, mm -hmm. and whites. Now, also in the definition of uh, monochrome, you could also have all shades of one color. Uh, let me see. I can back up and I'll show you that just for the heck of it. So I'm going to go back. This is my history tool. Are you guys familiar with that? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. So I'm going to take it all the way back to the beginning here. And I'm going to go to Camera Raw. And Camera Raw takes a couple of minutes, or not a couple of minutes, but takes a little bit to open up. It doesn't open up right away for two reasons on my computer. One is that I just updated my Photoshop today. And the other reason is that it, if you have used your computer a lot in the last several days, you've used up a lot of processing power and it takes a minute to get there. Hmm. Is that is that um, what would be taking up the scratch pad? Um, yeah, the scratch memory? disk. The scratch disk. Uh -huh. Yeah, the scratch okay. disk is uh, yes. being used up. And that's why it's very prudent, especially with large images, to shut your computer down completely once a week and turn it back on. Okay. okay. So I'm back to my original here. Now, I'm going to have to move this slightly because your images of your names are in the way. <laughs> so I have to move that uh, over slightly. Okay. So what you can do in the basic tools is I could create this as a monochrome and I'll show you how. I'm going to take the temperature and it's all blue. There's, there's still some magenta in there. Hmm. And I might have to change the tint slightly. Oh, let's make it all, uh, all green is too, too much, but we can make it all blue. And I would need to also bring down the saturation because you can see the green leaves. So you have to find a happy medium in there where you can get it into a single color tone. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can get in a single color tone, all green there if I wanted to. But I was hoping to see if I could get it to go blue, but I can't because there's too much green. But anyway, that's a way to create a, monoto a monochrome. Mm. Technically, is a monochrome. Mm -hmm. It's only green. And as long as you change your temperatures and you uh, pull back the saturation some, then you can do it that way. The other thing you can do in Photoshop is you could also add a filter on top of here, a green filter if you wanted it all green or other things. Have you used hmm. those before? Do you know where those are? No, I, no. I'm not familiar. Okay. <clears throat> Do you know what a warming filter is? Have you heard of that before? Um, yes. Yeah. And what you're doing with the warming filter is you're just taking a scene that's too cool and you're warming it up. It's just, you're really kind of changing the temperature, but it's with a filter. So uh -huh. let me cancel this. And I'll go back to here. And then you can go to filter. And you can go to
Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's in adjustments. <laughs> so there's photo filters here. Oh, OK. I have seen that. Yeah, OK. And I use a warming filter sometimes oh, to okay. warm things up. And I'll just turn that on briefly just so you can see what it does to this image. Uh, didn't do a whole lot. I was thinking it was going to warm it up a lot more, but it did. Oh, I don't know. Well, let's go back to the layer. Anyway, photo filters are, are uh, helpful to use uh, when you need one. Mm -hmm. And that shifted it to green. And you can also increase the density to do pretty much what we we're doing temperature wise mm -hmm. before. But that's just repeats the vastness of what Photoshop can do. Right. So now I'm going to do a black and white. I'm going to switch to this image. And now I'm going to do that black and white all in Camera Raw. So it's going to take a second for that to open. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I've been processing a lot of big images today, so yeah. sorry about that. Okay, so in the in the um, camera raw, you have a black and white button here. Have you seen that before? I've never used camera raw, so. <laughs> Oh, I mean, not in this this feature. No. Okay, so it's new for me. Well, it's a great, absolutely great tool because you can control more things than what we just demonstrated in the other uh, black and white adjustment tool. So, so you you click on black and white, and now you have all these tools down below to use to affect that black and white. So. It shows as a monochrome. And then we can take the temperature and see how that affects it. If I go to the left, those trees in the center get uh, mm -hmm. darker. And I'll go to the right, it gets brighter. Mm -hmm. so I like them about right there. And you can change the tint, does the same thing, gives you the ability to make those changes. You, now you have exposure if you want to brighten the whole thing up or darken the whole thing down, which I don't really want to do. Uh, you have the contrast there in a all in this single camera raw, you have a lots of different capabilities. Mm -hmm. And you have to you have to play with them. You have to take mm -hmm. them, and figure out what makes sense to you. So this is the highlight that I'm sliding. And you could take whatever the highlight in the image is to brighten it up. And the same thing with shadows. I can deepen the shadows or lighten the shadows. I'm going to go through each one of these whites. You know, I don't want it to be blown out, but I think there's probably just a tad I could do with uh, whites and blacks were fine pretty much where they were. I could open them up a little bit, I guess. And the texture tool is something you use more for faces or for people because it puts a slight softness or blur to it. 
So I'm going to pull the texture tool to the left. And I don't know if we can really see it with a landscape, but it's more for people where you go mm -hmm. to the right and that texture is going to get a little bit grainy. So you don't want to put too much texture on a person. You, mm -hmm. You'd want to soften them up. Clarity, the same thing. You can really blow it out a little bit, but you know, put a little bit of clarity in there. And then dehaze is interesting because it's going to be different with every image. Uh, if I pull the dehaze down to the left, I don't see much effect up to the right. So dehaze is not going to give me anything. Uh, but if you had a cityscape and you had smog, then dehaze could help you sharpen up the image. Mm. There's a bunch more controls down here. We won't go into all of them, but I'll show you one that'll be helpful for competitions. Uh, first one's called geometry. And that's where, uh, in this case, I've already used a geometry tool, but what it will do is it'll give you two boxes to click and you click both of those. And what that does is if your lens creates any distortion in the scene, you click it and it will, it'll stop the distortion and it'll also stop fringing. Have you heard of fringing before? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, fringing puts kind of a, a purple magenta edge around things. I, oh, yes. Uh -huh. You've okay. seen it before, I'm sure. Uh huh. I have. I didn't know it's what what it was called. <laughs> yeah. So before you save your image, uh, you come to geometry. It gives you two boxes to check, and you should check those, and it will help you with uh, with those. I don't know if I can. I don't think I can do anything after the fact. No. Okay. Uh, but what I wanted to show you besides geometry is effects. And the key with effects is, and you've seen many people use this in uh, competitions, is vignetting. So you, it will automatically create a vignette around this image. So mm -hmm. we just focus in on these bright, green, yellow trees, uh, or you go the opposite way and it does it, but it blends it out to white on the edges. Mm -hmm. so I know you've seen these and some people doing this in competitions. Mm -hmm. I, I do it typically about half the time. You'll see my image with a little vignetting around it because it focuses your eye in on what's the important part of the subject. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A good tool to to know. So on on this one, it there's uh there's not adjustments for making it more um circle or oval or left or right positioning. It's it's more of a an even uh the vignette vignette yeah, yeah around the get, edges. You don't get a choice. It it does it for mm -hmm. you. Right. I, okay. I can show you how to do your own if you wish. I think I have something else that um, uh, I have an older version of Photoshop. <laughs> um, I'm no. not sure if they have this, but it's, I'm surprised that an older version still, the new one still has, you know, the basic that I've been used to using. But Yeah, yeah, anyway. that still has a tremendous number of tools. Yeah. And then this is the black and white mixer, which gives you that same, I'm not going to move all these, but that gives you those same tools that we looked at before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now we have a black and white. And I probably should have picked a half dome or something out of my library of, of pictures. But since I took these recently, I wanted to see what happens to them in black and white. Yeah, well, it's lovely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to cancel out of this. And go back to the original image. And then one of the requests by someone that wasn't able to attend was they wanted to know a little bit more about layers. How do you guys feel about layers? Where are you with layers? Yeah, I I am all confused by the by the layers. Okay. Well, I I, I use it a lot. 
but um, my way, I don't know what, <laughs> you may have some helpful hints. <laughs> okay. Well, there's lots of different ways to approach layers. And we won't get too much into blend modes and all those sort of things tonight. But for if I do a class just on layers, then I will do something along those lines where we can take lots of different approaches to layers. But just as a basics, uh, you can take any image that you have and you can create a new layer down here by hitting the plus. And that's a new blank layer. There's nothing in there. Mm -hmm. But I could come over here to the T for type tool. And I could title this if I wanted to. I could, let's make it big. Let's make 60 point and let's call it uh, quiet scene. And so I just typed in the word quiet scene. And then if you look to the upper right, oops, and I have to go around my little screen sharing. That's not, you probably can't see it on yours. But anyway, up there, black is the color that's chosen right now for text. Mm -hmm. And I'll have to click on that and I'll pick white. And you just pick a color by clicking anywhere. Mm -hmm. And you can pick red, whatever color or you can use this slide and you can change it to any color in the rainbow. And, but I'm just gonna come over to this corner and pick this white and say, okay. And so now it says quiet scene. Mm -hmm. And Here's something interesting with layers. You can double click on the layer and now it says quiet scene, just like I typed, but I double click on it and now I can put a drop shadow underneath that quiet scene if I wanted to in black mm -hmm. or any color I want and change the angle of what it's gonna be how far away, how big a spread, and the size of that. So I'll make it bigger so you can see it better, but. Oops. See how, hang on a second, I have to make it so you can see it. <laughs> I can see it. Um, we, can, we can see part of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there. Uh -huh. um, so I can make that shadow. Can you see how it's moving away? Yes. Uh huh. So I'm going to change that angle to coming like if the light was just above it and to the right. And then I can create a spread. So I could, I could do everything to make it kind of cartoony like that, or I could just make it a soft spread of black. And the reason that you even want to do that is if you're titling these for slides or something. But also now that the shadow's in there, I could put it anywhere. Right. Uh-huh. And it'll still show up. Uh, I just was reducing the distance there. So it looks good there, it looks good here. Okay, so I just created a layer and put some type in there and you just turn them on and off. They're still there, but you turn it on and off with this eyeball on the side here. And if I just wanted the text and didn't want the image anymore, I could do that too. Mm -hmm. But the easiest way to add layers to it is to, to simply take this other image that we have open already. Let's take that. I'll come back to this scene. I'm going to take this falls and I'm going to 
bring it in here. And all I did was I dragged it down here. And now I'm going to drag it into the other image. And it says different depth, but that's okay. I want to proceed. Hmm. And the reason it's different depth is because this is a TIFF and this is a JPEG. Oh, uh huh. But I can drag that image into here and then oh. I can do anything I want with it. I can make it bigger and put it down here in the corner. And so now I've got the two images working with each other. I could bring it over here and I could even take that layer and double click on it and add a drop shadow. <laughs> if you wanted to drop shadow around the image so that it would stand out from the other, there are a billion effects that you can use and mm -hmm. a lot of them are right here. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's just one way to think about how to get that in there. So I'm gonna cancel that. And I just turn it off if I want to move it or look at it somewhere else. If I want it to be the central part of the scene. If I wanted to uh, add it in some fashion. There are also, like I said, there's blend mode and other things to get these two images to work together really nicely. Uh, oh, I was going to show you how to vignette and have you guys you've done some vignetting on your own is that what you're saying Nancy uh yes I have I've used it before mm -hmm. okay um I have it I have, in Topaz is where I've, um, my older uh Photoshop doesn't have that feature but I, yeah. I used you know but Topaz for for that <laughs> you can do it in Photoshop even the old version and even without camera raw if you wanted to mm -hmm. you always have to be on the background you want to work in so i'm going to click on the background scene here of the tree and then i'm going to choose this marquee tool and this is a tiff so it's a pretty big image so i'm going to need like 80 pixels let's say and that's 80 pixels of feather are you familiar with what feather is uh, yes. Uh -huh. This makes the, whatever the edge of the selection just makes it soft. Mm -hmm. So I could create my own vignette. Mm -hmm. Is that the way Topaz works? I'm, I'm not familiar with um, that. No, it, um, you can move it around, but there's like sliders if you want it up or let to the left or, or resize it circle yeah. to uh, you know oval or uh, um sure. or square or whatever <laughs> okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the inverse mm -hmm. the opposite of what this ellipse is and you can't see it but that edge is very soft in here mm -hmm. and i'm going to do image adjust brightness contrast and i'm just going to bring the brightness down and now I created a vignette and I click off of that. Oh, I have to say, okay. Then I click off of that and now it vignetted the scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And that's very yeah. quick and easy to do. You mm -hmm. just have to visualize how you want the ellipse to be. Right. Uh, and you control it instead of Photoshop controlling it or camera raw controlling it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. So with layers, the real key is that you have to have the highlighted layer that you want to work with. And the other factor that you want to know about is opacity. Mm -hmm. And you bring the opacity down. And I could almost create a scene here that looks like it has these waterfalls in it. 
and I'll bring it down to here. And almost as if there's a little creek here. And so mm -hmm. what you need to do to make that realistic though, is you have to do what I just did with the elliptical mark key tool and mm -hmm. a and a big uh, feather on the edges. And I could select the inverse and I could delete it. And then I could increase the opacity. I'd have to do some color shifting and things in here. So um, that's how you get rid of the box. Yes. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could also take the uh, eraser tool, mm -hmm. which is right here, and you make it, in my case, I need to make it fairly large so I can see it, make the hardness very soft. And then the opacity of the tool, of the eraser tool, just all that means is that you're going to do a little bit. It's only going to it's only going to take a little bit off at a time, or it's going to take a lot off at a time. So if I have 48%, it's going to take a little less. And I could come in here and get rid of some of this background in here. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And help it to blend together a little bit better. Yeah. Um, what is the difference? There's the hardness and then the opacity of the eraser tool. I yeah. use both, but the hardness I haven't, I don't have a, yeah. a, a feel for exactly. So I re forget about it. But yeah, you know. and so you, you're wise to do that because most of the hardness is too hard. So mm -hmm. let's just look at, uh, let's go to the background here. And if I want to, clone an area. So I'm going to just hit my clone tool here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to pick a large. So you can see I'm going to do very heavy hardness. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, so I've got this. But what that's going to do is when I do Alt and click to select my clone source, it's mm -hmm. going to be give me a very round shape, right? A hard line, a yeah. hard line on that yeah. edge, yeah. yeah. And I don't want a hard line on that edge. Mm -hmm. And I have my opacity turned down right now, but that's what it would look like, right? So you almost never want a hard edge. There are occasions where I'm uh, retouching uh, photos for clients or things when I do want a harder edge, but that's rare in photography. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but you have to get used to it. So just make, uh, you know, spend some time with it. And either, I probably for photography, I rarely would go about above 25% on hard. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah, that's probably, I keep it low. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but, I, and I forget to use it. Uh, yeah, I keep it on zero for backgrounds, but mm -hmm. uh, people's faces, uh, mm -hmm. you want to, depending on how clear your image is, if you've got a really nice, clear image to start with, you might want a hardness of, you know, 12, 14, something like that. Mm -hmm. hmm. Great. Okay. So I'm going to take this out of here. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go to my history and I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. And my image is as it was originally. Mm. And something I forget to do when I teach this class is that I often forget to say, okay, Let's just duplicate the background, you know, duplicate the layer. And now it's a copy. And yeah, that's what I forget to do. And and then sometimes I 
darn <laughs> i forgot to do it <laughs> yeah but for me i always have my raw files uh -huh. i don't i never touch those because i bring them in here as a tiff and uh -huh. my raw files are always still there so yeah oh great but the history tool is is great for going backwards as far as you well i you can set that in preferences by the way Mm -hmm. uh, how many uh how many steps actions or yeah uh -huh. yeah so if you edit preferences i don't remember exactly where it is but it's in here somewhere yeah i'm familiar with that okay uh, history and content credentials uh -huh. it's in there. Yeah. Um, oh there it is um No, but it, it's somewhere in here and you can set it to how many times. Maybe it's under general. Mm -hmm. Oh, while you have this open, yeah. um, there's, we, we you mentioned um, scratch disk and that's yeah. what I'm not really clear since you have it open here of what percentage or um, how you set up scratch disk uh, oh. on your drive, you know, your working drive. Right. So you maybe this isn't the right time to discuss it, but that's all right. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, let me see where it is. It's, it's about there. halfway middle. Um, oh, yeah, you're right scratching. there. Yeah, that's okay. my I went right to it. <laughs> okay, so mine is set up on my actual C drive because I have three other drives mm -hmm. that I dump things to on a regular basis. But my C drive is a solid state drive, so it's the fastest drive. So I just keep, uh, my scratch disk just goes there. Mm -hmm. But if you have a fast drive, that's a secondary drive, then you would just click that and make that your scratch disk. Mm -hmm. You have more than one drive. You know? I've got three and there are three terabytes. I, I just got a new computer. <laughs> Oh, and okay. and 128 gigabytes of memory I, I and a fast processor and um so um now i'm setting up because my old one was um just uh, kind of dying and it eventually did die on me yeah. <laughs> so so uh, so yeah. i have drive space but i was wondering uh for photoshop because it is you know, a memory hog. Yeah, so that's um, a, to, to be that's able to, because I, I was always running out and having to clear, you know, make more room. My drives were full. <laughs> right, and that I think that's in performance. So you go to performance. You see what I have here. This is how much RAM I have. I have 25 megabytes of RAM that's available right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying let Photoshop use most of it. So you can use this slider and change that mm -hmm. to whatever you want. And I think that's what you want to, that's what you're talking about actually, rather than scratch disk. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess that, yeah, that would be what's allocated to Photoshop. Um, right. So uh, check yours and see where your performance is. Okay. And whatever your available RAM is, you want to make sure that it is, like 75% of your available. Oh, okay. So Great. 73% is what I have on, mm -hmm. on here. Mm -hmm. and, oh, okay. and RAM is random access memory. It's the fastest possible memory on your computer. Faster than a hard drive, faster than anything else. Mm -hmm. So that's what you want to use for your performance. When you're using Photoshop, you want to make sure that number is fairly high. Right. Okay. So, so having, you know, uh, a full loaded memory, that's the RAM that uh, your memory for your memory. Uh, that's RAM is, that's on your processor. On the, on the processor itself. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Has, There's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it doesn't have anything to do with your disk drives. And yeah, or um, RAM right. memory on the board. Yeah. Yes. I'm like, you know, what would be a minimum 32 or 64 mega or uh, gig, 
gigabytes, I guess. It's gigabytes. Uh, yeah. yeah. This RAM is actually on the processor. On the processor. That that I don't know. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so like I said, just set it up like this so you'll have faster performance with Photoshop. Great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, most of the time when you get it from the factory, it's probably 40% or something like that. Uh-huh. Okay. So you want to... I am using Photoshop Elements. Uh -huh. So it probably doesn't have all this. It's a light, lighter version. Uh, it might have have some of this, you'll have to check preferences. Uh, I see, I, I never seen any of those. So I, I assume that- Yeah, it could be you don't have that. Uh-huh, got it. But it's under the edit and then I see. preferences is at the very bottom. Okay. And Nancy, do you know if you have a GPU? That's a graphics processor. Um. I'm not sure. I'd, I'd have to go check. Um, I had it. It's uh, kind of a custom made. Um, uh -huh. So I, you know, I haven't looked into all that. Um, it's not an NVIDIA or GeForce. I had that before. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> but okay. go ahead. So you might have a graphics card that's separate. And if you do, then you want to make sure this is checked that it's using okay. that. Because oh. I, I have the NVIDIA. And you may have it on your lap on a laptop. No, I have a, a desk full um, oh, desktop. desktop. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you could e yeah, so you may easily have a dedicated processor. Yeah. Okay. So check make I'm, sure I'm it's sure. using that too. Okay. I never oh, I didn't know to check that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh and we won't get into all these tools, but anyway, that's kind of an introduction mm -hmm. uh, for tonight. And uh -huh. any other questions that uh, that are coming where, up? Where, where do I find your uh, previous recordings? So you go to, when I send you the uh, YouTube link, I'll send that to you tomorrow. Okay. And when I send that to you, you'll be able to see uh, my channel and it'll have, uh, there's probably 10 on there, something like that. Okay, okay. And there's one on layers too, by the way. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah. And we'll do a more complicated, these these first uh, 10 are all really pretty basics uh, to get people oriented in the right direction. And then we'll mm -hmm. go into more detail and as requests come in, I'm I'm building them a little differently for each each group. That's great. Thank you yeah. very much. Yes, no thank you very much. It's really helpful. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you. I will okay. send you a link tomorrow. And, All right. And and Ling, you're here too. I see. Because I was in the, another session with Larry. Oh, we have. Uh, okay. We have. Uh, we have. We have a, a still life workshop uh, review. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I recorded it so you yeah, can. Okay. You can take a look. Okay. I I have another image which is very complicated and to to do the selection. Okay. So, so I, I, can I send you the, the image so you can take yeah. a look? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Send it to me. Bye. And 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 uh, everybody can do that. Anybody, if you've got an image that's going to be particularly complicated or you think it's, you don't know how to approach it, send it to me and I'll give you some guidelines on how to approach it. And uh, Ling and I, we actually had a little uh, Zoom session and we talked about different options on how to fix it. So, oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, You're welcome. Very helpful. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. I will see right. everybody soon, hopefully in live and in person one of these days, but uh, mm -hmm. for Zoom for now. Yeah. Okay. At least okay. we have that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank Good you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.